Hey, Nim Sony. Welcome to part 4 of my Unity tutorial series, Moving in Unity. Today we're going to be discussing the basics of physics in Unity. Now, this is actually a precursor to part 5, where I'm going to be using a physics system to move our object around. And we can see here, from our previous part, that we have movement based on our camera. The problem with this movement is that it can go through walls. Let's highlight that by making a wall. So we can move here. I've duplicated this cube down here, which I'm now going to scale up. And I'm going to scale it back as well, just to make it a wall. So here we can see we've got a wall. In fact, I placed it on the side of our camera. Oh well, camera moves, so that's okay. So you can see here that because we're moving our object just by its transform and we have no physics on it whatsoever, you can just move it right through the wall. That's a problem, of course, but we can fix that. Let's have a look first at what our player actually is. It's just a cube with a transform and a script. I'm going to move that back now. And what, what I'm going to place in, in the scene instead is a sphere. This sphere, I'm going to put it at 0, 0 on the X and y, Z values, but I'm going to leave it at 2 on the Y. And I'm going to move it a little bit to the left duplicate it using control D and then move it to the right we're going to give it material here we are and let's make a second material as well again control T uh, control D sorry we can duplicate materials we can duplicate anything in unity using control D by selecting it and then change the material color I'm going to go with a nice blue and we're going to attach that to the one on our right okay let's press play we can see both of our spheres here and they don't move, of course we haven't attached a script to them. Now this one on the left, you can see here that we have a sphere collider. Of course we have the same on the right, but we're going to remove this collider from the one on the right. There's a reason, and this video is all about determining which physics system we're actually going to use in our game. And I'll explain to you why I'm not going to be using a rigid body. Firstly, I have to explain to you what the rigid body actually does. So down here in add component, I'm going to add a rigid body to our red sphere and on our right on our blue sphere I'm going to add a character controller now character controller is a special type of physics object which allows unity to literally move an object with some collision but it's entirely script based it's entirely unity's own construct whereas the rigid body itself uses the pure physics system of the Nvidia physics physics engine Okay, which is the physics engine directly from Unity, from NVIDIA. So let's press play and see what happens to our red sphere automatically. You can see that it falls and hits the bottom floor. That's because it is quite literally a physics object. Because it's got gravity as well, we can switch it off and on. It's got mass and it has as well, it gives you the opportunity to add constraints which would allow you to stop it from moving in those specific axes including rotation so you can stop its rotation from being affected by physics directly the one on the right didn't fall that's because character controller doesn't actually perform any physics at all it does calculations when you move it using unity's own special movement functions to move it through objects and determine what's in front of it when you move it specifically when you move it and that's very important to understand it means when an object is flying towards this it'll bounce off the red one the red one will roll away but it'll bounce off the blue one the blue one won't even detect anything has happened what we can do with the red one to have complete physical code control a scripted control over it is switch it to is kinematic now this gives us full control over the object and you can see here that it doesn't do any of its actual physics internally by itself. Let's see to moving those objects now. Here on our player, grab our script and we're going to add two objects very quickly. One is a rigid body. Oops. I wish I could spell correctly. One is a rigid body. We'll call it sphere one. And the other is a character controller, which we'll call sphere two character controller there we go right so what we're going to do here in fact is duplicate our movement control 
and attach it to sphere 1 which is a rigid body. Duplicate that and attach it to sphere 2 which in fact requires us to access the transform directly because character controllers don't have their own position value, values. Switch back over, make sure that they are attached to our new reference variables. So sphere 1 and sphere 2. When we press play, you'll see something happening. We now have full movement on both of those objects. The red one lags slightly, we'll explain that later on. But you can see, even now, even though they both have physics co uh, colliders on them, they can still move directly through the wall. Now that's about the limitations that we have on the red sphere, because it's a rigid body object, and it's designed to move using the actual physics engine. But the one on the right, the blue one, it actually uses Unity's own clever system for moving objects and determining walls. We're going to program that very simple now. We use Unity's own internal function, so switch back over to your code, change dot position so that it's dot move. And now that's an actual function, so we're not actually adding to it. Remove the add equals and change it into an open bracket, and at the end, close the bracket. So you can see here by the highlighted red section that are within our move move function, we're applying that movement that we looked at in the previous movement uh, code as well. Save it and switch over to the game and press play. You'll see that it's exactly the same movement, however there's one difference. The difference is that the blue one will now trace every movement, every frame and determine whether there's a wall in front of it. Ta-da! It gets stuck on the wall because it can't go beyond that point. Again, this will also work on any diagonals. So you can see here we're going diagonally. And we can go sideways into the wall. And it slides along the edges as well. It's very, very useful because it does all of our movement control. Completely scripted. But it also prevents it from moving through walls. That's why we're going to use a character controller for our movement. Not a physics object in this case. It's because we want to understand how the physics calculations are done rather than just using what is already built for us. This is what we're using because we're going to control our object from script entirely. We're going to program our gravity, we're going to program our velocity and acceleration, we're going to program in our jumps. We don't want to use the physics engine for everything because that is designed primarily for realistic physics and realistic collisions, bouncing, friction, air drag, all of that kind of stuff. That's the end of this video. In the next video, we're going to remove our red sphere and start working with actually moving our object and applying gravity, moving it with a lot of physics calculations. We're going to clean up our code as well, so be sure to check out the next video. This one I understand was a bit boring and it was one of those videos that needed to be done because we needed to understand why we chose one object over the other. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.